and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and to part five of building the Saracen's Head pub. I mean, um, it seems to be taking a lot longer than any of the uh, previous smaller builds. I mean, the um, Mrs. T sweet shop only took four weeks or four weekends and here we are on the fifth weekend and it's all happening on the upper floors see well it will be so like I says it's um, all happening on the upper floors but in order to create rooms I'm gonna have to divide uh, this space into four rooms um, two of the rooms I'll be putting detail in which is the two front rooms this one and this one the back rooms I'll probably just uh, decorate them and, and that's that I'll leave it at that otherwise you can see this series going on for about ten weeks <laughs> so that's what's going to happen so the next thing we need to do is to make some walls I have cut some 2 mil card 32 mil high which just sits underneath the 3 by 2 um, card that I have left for the upper ceiling and uh, so before we get stuck in um, I'd just like to tell you about what I'm going to use to decorate the walls on the way out from my local model railway shop and I had to glance across and I saw these sheets and I thought yeah that would be ideal for wallpaper you're kidding aren't you? wallpaper? yep that's what I'm thinking wallpaper now it's 124th scale and uh, I think it's just perfect perfect for um, wallpaper out these upper rooms so that's what I'm going to use for that and also did you know that the number one adult hobby for a time was building dolls houses for male and female in this country did you know that well, there's a useful contact for you contact tip anyway so that's what I got this from my local model railway shop um, as they do uh, dolls house miniatures so it's, it's fairly new stuff there's a, a copyright studios there and if your model your local model shop might be able to have some but uh, I got this from Wicker models in Porchester so there you go right so now I'm gonna cut some of this up into 32 mil strips and glue them to the walls right I have been doing some wallpapering um, as you can see I have done um, the internal walls and I've also done inside the building as well as you can see there and there and you can also see I have carpeted the rooms as well yes that is correct I have carpeted the rooms now the stuff I'm using is dollhouse carpet again 124th scale um, you can buy that from your model shops as well it's, uh, it's got a sticky back um, on it so you just got to pull that off and you can just stick it straight onto your card it's quite thin and um, you can get this in all colours, I just happen to use burgundy, uh, you can get it in uh, green, blues, uh, whatever you want, so there you go, carpet. Right, getting back to what I have done here, I have not done uh, where the windows are, the reason being is you won't see it, even from this side because there will be a uh, centre wall running down the centre there where the lines are and there'll be a pair of walls this way as well which will hide the cable for the lamp outside because there we have a hole 
just there for um, the, the two cables uh, when the, I received the lamp so the cable come out there through the wall and then down through that hole there and uh, which will meet up with the rest of the cables that is the plan anyway just a little tip um, any um, doors or paintings you want to add to the walls stick them on the walls first before you put them into your um, doll's house I mean into your pub um, it just makes that a little bit easier to do it while it's flat pack now that the walls have all been fitted up into the upper floor as it were I have uh, divided the space um, that was available up on the upper floor into five rooms as you can see we have the ladies and gents over here on the upper floor and uh, a spare oom um, these two rooms are the rooms we're going to be interested in these two here because uh, that's where the LEDs are going to light up the rooms so that's what I'm going to be focusing on next now uh, a few weeks back um, I had a comment regarding that the pub may be haunted so that's given me an idea for this room which we shall see it uh, develop so we'll probably have a ghost and some other bits and pieces in that room and in this room well we shall see what happens here as we go along so Let's start making some furniture. Right, before we start making some bedroom furniture, there's just one more thing I have to add to the bar. Um, and that is some stools. Now, I had a, a long deep thought about this. And basically, I'm using toothpicks and I'm chopping them at 7 millimeters tall um, if you get the good quality toothpicks they won't shatter but as you've seen here that one has so yeah good quality toothpicks so what I'm doing is Make sure it's flush with the edge of the roll and chopping them at seven millimeters. Now I've been cutting two at a time because just to make sure I can get them the same length. So I've got to cut an extra one for there. Yeah, they're, they're not the easiest things to do. Uh, I mean, these little toothpicks, they either want to fall over or stick to each other. So it's, it's not easy trying to get them to stay apart so we can create the legs for these stools. I've already put the super glue onto the washer and as you can see they just sometimes they just want to fall over until the glue gets a hold and the hardest part of this is to get the legs equally apart steady hand is required yeah I'm just using a bit of old scrap post-it note paper but uh, it should do the job right so they're all on there 
just keeping them equally distance apart, I'd say. I have just added some thread to go around the legs. So when you turn the stools upright, you can just make out that there's a crossbar around the legs. So once the glue is dried, I can paint them. Right, moving on to the bedroom furniture. Making two beds, obviously, because there's, there's two rooms that I'm going to detail, and we have the two headboards. As you can see there, this one is going to be for the um, four post bed, and that's just uh, going to be the standard bed. And I did do a little bit of a drawing, gives you a rough idea of what the size of the beds are going to be like. So it's going to be 24 mil high. Uh, 26 mil in length and uh, 22 mil across there. Ignore the 20; it's 22, and uh, and that's what's going to look like. This is where we are at the moment. I use my trusty figure to to work out for the mattress. <laughs> uh, what I've done here is just before I start assembling the bed, I have taken a sharp blade and just taken the corner off there you'll see why later on when I come to add things like a sheet uh, and little things like that now what I've done here is I've come up six millimeters and the mattress is just going to go below that six millimeter line so I'm just going to super glue that on now Just taking the corners off slightly for the toothpicks that I've used for the posts. And we'll just let that get a grip. Now the mattress is just three mil card, uh, one sheet of two and one sheet of one mil. I'm just making sure that that's 90 degrees to the headboard, which it is. So the next thing I want to do now is super glue two more pieces of um, these two picks, one there and one there. So I'll just just take the corner off slightly. to allow the toothpick to glue to the corner. Before I do that, I better measure up my six millimeters. Right, there we have our four posts. And it's the bed's not rocking now, that's good. So the next thing I want to do now is before I wrap any um, trim around the top, um, we need to add some sheets and some pillows. I finished making the beds up and uh, now I've cut some sheets <laughs> basically I've made them out of kitchen towel 
um, 32 mil square. Now the idea here is, well, we've milled, made beds before, so we <laughs> just in it in a smaller version. So I'll just fold that back by two millimeters, and hopefully we can then just lie that. on the bed as it were and then just like let it hang down either side what I'll do though I will notch it or I'll cut it so that it folds down at the front and at the sides more easy so I'll just do that first so I've cut out where it goes around the post, um, it's 6.5 either side because that leaves 22 millimeters for the mattress. And hopefully that will just drop in there. And then we'll um, fold the corners down and then down like so. And then we have the bed made, as it were. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use some PVA wood glue oh, to glue it down onto the bed. Normally when we make a bed there's normally two of us, isn't there? So if I just do that, let's fold that over. Now I like the way the texture of the kitchen towel has come through. It's got like a little pattern there. Right. There we go, something like that. So we shall leave that to dry. And then uh, we'll add the pillows in a minute. For the pillows, um, I rolled up some kitchen towel and then at the last bit, just a little tiny bit of PVA across. And then I cut them up into eight millimeter pieces. by roughly four or five millimeters. So what I can do now is just chop them straight onto the bed with a little bit of PVA. So what I'll do is get a little bit of PVA, a piece of card, dip them in the PVA and then just glue them on there. Right, so that bed's finished. So this one, we've just got to put some card around the top. And then that'll be ready for painting. So now that we've made our beds, we uh, might as well lie in them. I mean, paint them. <laughs> um, I'm using matte 37 and matte 164 50 50, which gives it a, a uh, mahogany kind of a, a tone look. So I'm just uh, painting these up now. So now I'm just painting the uh, duvet covers a very, very light green. 
and um, it seems to be showing up the texture of the kitchen towel. I just hold that up. See what I mean. And with a little bit of white paint for the pillows, these beds are now finished. So it's just a case of putting these into the rooms. So that's the four poster. And this is the standard uh, double bed, as it were. Right, I'll glue these in the two of the room. Now we move on to uh, make a, making a couple of wardrobes. Um, basically, I'm using the scraps that were left over from cutting the windows out. Um, so it's roughly um, 16 millimeters by um, 20 millimeters tall um, with a top and a base. Now, the base I've just taken a little tiny chamfer off um, not much because it's only a couple of millimeters bigger uh, than the um, wardrobe um, carcass itself so it's just a case of gluing all these bits together and then painting them so that makes the wardrobe Four millimeters thick. It's going to be a quick build. This one. Just making sure the back is flush, and that is the base. There we go, wardrobe. And with the addition of a couple of bedside drawers, I think that's all the furniture I'm going to put into the um, bedrooms. Right, so, as for the ghost, I have this figure here reading a book uh, with a top hat. I haven't got a clue where this figure came from. But if I paint him um, white, it could be Charles Dickens. Um, it's the ghost that haunts the Saracen's head. So I'm going to um, rub some paint onto him white paint and then rub it off and see what he looks like. He does look a little bit spooky. So what I did with this figure is I painted him white. He got a cotton boot with some thinners on it and pulled back some of the white. And then once the paint had dried, it's got some black um, weathering powder to bring out the features of the face. So yeah, he looks kind of creepy. So we shall put him in the room and we'll have a look at the rooms. So I wonder 
Who lives in a pub like this? As we go peeping through the keyhole. In one of the rooms we have a four poster bed, a wardrobe and a friendly ghost. In the opposite room we have a well decorated room and an artist. I wonder what he's painting. Ah, but that's for the butler's eyes only. Well, I don't think there's a lot left to do. Uh, the ladies and gents here will have a door. And I might turn the windows down a little bit. Um, so you can't really see into them. And in the other room, I think I'll leave it as it is. But I might hang some drapes. And if any light does shine through the slot I have made in the wall here, yeah, there'll be very very little. Um, I think the main idea was or is to decorate these two rooms and I think I've done that. So we have a ghostly goings on and a Mr Rembrandt. Meanwhile, back at the bar, um, I have added the bar stools. So I've placed three along there and one alongside the piano. And uh, if you look at these two chaps here, they, it looks like they've got a couple of empty pint glasses. And uh, I've made them out of straw. About three and a half mil high. Squashed the straw, cut about a millimetre off and then rolled it. And it looks like they've got a couple of pint glasses there. So it's slowly coming together. I'm still waiting on a few more figures to help fill the bar up, as it were. And, uh, yeah. Quite like what's going on there at the moment. What we have in front of us here is a kitchen towel with some coloured strips um, just by using felt tip pens and because it's kitchen towel it goes through both sides so you'd have to do both sides. The idea is I'm going to make some curtains. Uh, I've just measured the drop and it's roughly 25 mil. I'll just mark that with a pencil. And then cut this into strips of 25 millimeters. Once you've cut them into 25 mil strips, then you cut them down to their individual colors and then you just split them in half yet again like I've done there and then the finished result once you've glued them into the building should be something like that and this is what it looks like inside um, I've just run a little bit of PVA glue down each side of the window and then just dropped them in. Simples. Going back to these point glasses um, using three millimeter diameter straws. Uh, I've been cutting them at three millimeters. Once you've cut them, as you can see, they go flat a little bit. So what I do is just cut off another millimetre. And then open up the straw. Let's 
It's a bit fiddly this, but you've got to open up the cut. Like you've just done and fold the straw inside itself like so if you can see that and then just roll it really tight and you'll end up with something like that and then you just dip one end in super glue and then put it on the table So now we move on to the drain pipes. Um, what I've done here is I have cut a strip of 3mm by 2mm card. And what I've done is on the two edges where I've cut it, I've put some super glue on it and left it to dry. Once it dried, I then painted the uh, card a satin black. And then what I've done then. If I can pick up one of these pieces and show you. I have made up some downpipe um, troughs that go at the top of the drain pipes which collects the water and then obviously the uh, drain pipe then comes down underneath so these will sit just above the cornice here like it is in the photographs. So there's, there's three per um, front and back. If I show you the photograph, I can show you what I mean by these downpipes. As you can see there, here, here and here, that's the troughs which actually collect the water uh, for the downpipes. So that's what I've done with that. Um, here you can see, just about make out a bracket there, there's one there. There's a smaller one there, and there's probably another one there as well. So what I've done there, to make those, I've painted a piece of card, half mil thick card, satin black, cut them into two millimeter strips, and then cut them uh, into 2.5 by two millimeter strips, which then creates these little brackets for the, um, drain pipes and um, what I've done here has when the cornice was glued on or before the cornice was glued on I had notched out the back so we could slide the um, one mil um, solder wire through I've left them long um, so I can bend the bottom of the um, drain pipe up to create the spout. So I've got all the bits and pieces here to make the down pipes. I'm now just um, touching up the paint on the card where you can see the card where I've cut through on these guttering boxes thingy me jigs. So just to finish it off and obviously any bits of uh, super glue or anything like that and uh, there we have the front of the Saracen's head almost done Right, I hate to say this, but uh, we've come to another end of an episode of Building the Saracen's Head Pub. So I think we'll leave it there. Um, the drain pipes are still drying, so hopefully by the uh, end of next week they'll be dry and we'll be able to handle the building again. Uh, we can make out the ghost. Now then, is it Charles Dickens or is it Isambard Brunel looking at plans for his next railway build? Hmm, good question. Anyway, it was it was quite fun building the the interiors for the upper floors. 
making the beds up and the curtains and all the rest of it. We did the bar stools and uh, we've added some pint glasses as well. As you can see, the piano man's got his glass, and the two railway workers have got their glasses. So, yeah. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Stay safe. Until next time, enjoy your model railways. Cheers, everybody. Bye for now. Bye.